Baroness Hollands, your daughter was paralysed um, by a knife attack and in the aftermath of that appalling tragedy, uh, how were you treated by the press? Uh, well, there was extraordinary um, press interest, media interest in her, um, in what had happened to her and actually in her bravery in, um, in surviving and, uh, and, and just her courage. But the intrusion by the press was extraordinarily difficult to cope with, um, um, including uh, press uh, doorstepping, uh, you know, telephoto lenses, um, all manner of intrusion, um, not just for, um, for kind of the, the family immediately around her, but even, f but including for her grandmother, for example, who was living 200 miles away and was terminally ill with cancer. Um, and we had at one point to call police to ask them to remove a journalist who was refusing to go without um, photographs of my daughter. Um, this went on for a very long time, um, I mean a really long time, and um, on anniversaries of her injury, for example, we would also begin to see journalists queuing up outside to come and find out how she was. Um, and even five years afterwards, when she had another baby, we, we had journalists camping outside and, um, and uh, putting our house and her, her house under surveillance so that they could follow her. Um, it's, and do you know what was perhaps the most difficult was that the stories that were printed in the press, although they were kindly enough, were not true, most of them. And um, it only took two words from one name neighbor um, or one person for a whole lot of information to be taken off the internet and um, regurgitated as if it was new, which in my world we'd call plagiarism. And all of this must have compounded what was an incredibly traumatic time for the whole family. Yes, I gave evidence to the Leveson inquiry about it and indeed it was, it was extraordinarily traumatic. Um, and uh, not what you need when you're dealing with um, with another kind of trauma. And you actually need privacy at that time to be able to pull together as a family and to cope with the the real um, the real life um, circumstance that you're facing. Well, Ian, when you hear that account, it's hard to see, isn't it, how the press can be trusted by people like Baroness Hollings to put their own house in order? Well, I didn't come on the programme to answer um, Baroness Hollings or to um, give any evidence about that case, about which I know nothing. I'm here to talk about the principle of the freedom of the press and the necessity of, um, or not, of state um, regulation, which I'm against, along with a lot of other people, including Index on Censorship and a lot of respected bodies who are interested in protecting our freedoms. It's not a popular position at the moment and uh, a lot of the press have not helped themselves historically. But that doesn't alter the fact, it doesn't alter the evidence I gave to Leveson, um, which is that I do not think we need state regulation of the press, which is dangerous. Okay. Internationally, it has a very, very bad record and it's very difficult for Britain, um, I think, to argue that we need it here. But can victims of press intrusion trust the press to get their own house in order? Well, again, I, I, I didn't come on here to talk about victim press intrusion. My point to Leveson was, all the way through, um, the law needs to be enforced. Um, and we have laws in this country um, about um, harassment and about libel, and we have a lot of laws in this country, and we don't need any more from politicians. So, the, I mean, it's a fairly simple position. That is where I stand. Baroness Hollins, could you have used existing laws to tackle the intrusion that you faced? I mean, you talked about calling the police, for example. Um, how were not existing laws adequate? Look, um, the last thing you want is to have to start using the law and finding out what the law is when you're in the middle of a family um, situation like I described. So, um, do you know, um, freedom of the press is something I absolutely agree with. Um, what is being proposed by the cross-party charter is not state reg regulation. It's um, not at all, and I, and I think it's a, it's a parody of it to even suggest that it's state regulation. It is not. Um, the idea is um, that the, the press have been uh, supposedly self-regulating themselves for years. And for the, in the last 70 years, I think there have been seven, seven um, inquiries into the, um, the ethics and behaviour of the press. This time, I think it's time to act. And the idea is not to interfere with freedom, but to expect the press to behave responsibly. And any regulator which is set up, and indeed the press are free to, um, to propose a regulator, uh, but it must be Leveson compliant. And the okay. only thing which is in place 
Well, it, again, I mean, I don't want to disagree with, um, you know, the mother of a victim. I mean, no one wants to look worse on this than necessary. But Leveson compliant doesn't necessarily mean anything. There are huge sections of Leveson that don't make any sense. Some of them are nonsense. Some of them have been dropped already. Um, there, is, there is no simple answer to this. And it is no good saying that people who are arguing that the press must be free um, haven't got the point, don't understand, or are indulging in a parody, or that we are callous and unsympathetic. Um, to um, the victims. Nor is it fair to say, particularly in people in my own case, that we're not aware of the bad behaviour of the press. My magazine has spent about 40 years running examples of the way in which the press misbehaved. And this week, um, we have a new um, set of um, rather uh, furious people um, who are complaining about the behaviour of the press. I mean, the press is not pretty, but it is free. And it is no good saying we have got in place um, systems that will ensure that regulation doesn't make the press not free. It is unintended consequences. And if you look at all the precedents for state regulation, they are very bad. Everyone starts out with just a little bit of regulation, just a dab, just a, just a hint of it here and there, and it ends up with politicians deciding what goes into the press. And that is a principle which I and a very large number of other people, this isn't an unpopular view, think is dangerous.